we're set up here in the mill. Got the block in here. Got a three quarter inch drill chucked up in this uh, half inch collet. Now this drill doesn't have enough reach and I'm finding it hard to believe I do not have a Morris taper three quarter inch drill. At least not one that I could find. I could find uh, 7 eighths, 15 sixteenths, one inch, you name it. Uh, all sorts of weird sizes. I just couldn't find a three quarter. So uh, one of the advantages to these types of drills um, these reduced shank drills is you can just put them in a half inch collet and you don't have to worry about sticking a, a big um, Jacobs chuck out here uh, or any other kind of chuck to take up a bunch of your headroom and there's plenty of shank I'm exposing a little shank here but there's two times this much shank up in here these are these new precision twist, twist drill set of reduced shank drills that I bought from uh, Enco on a fabulous deal uh, one thing I will tell you about these drills, and, and they've been really good, is that a bunch of them aren't marked, right? So they don't have marks on them uh, that tell you what size they are. And, uh, you know, sure, I got a great deal on these drills, but, you know, even the, even the cheap Chinese stuff comes marked. So not all of them, just some of them uh, don't come marked. So buyer beware there. Uh, anyway, we're just going to go ahead and run this through. It's going to take a little while. Oop. Make sure we're in gear here. Ready for the other side here uh, went all the way through with that one now we're just gonna hit it I'm not gonna bore you with all this all right I'm working on the bushings right here and I got some uh, old some off-cut um, I believe it's off-cut 1144 or stress proof to you uh, Europeans there um, that I'm going to use these bushings. The bushings don't have to go the full length of the part. The part, the bushings only extend to within an inch of the end of the part. So three and a half inches on the bushing, 3.3 3 actually, uh, is plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to size and get rid of all this rust and stuff on this junk. And then I'm going to drill it to the 1932nds for the brad point bit that I have for cutting pocket holes. And uh, then I'm going to part them off to uh, three and a half inches. But, uh, so there we go. I've already got this thing in the chuck. I've already got a, the faced off. I've already got a center drilled. So now it, we just have a, just the very smallest amount to shave off of here because this uh, stock is just slightly oversized over three quarter. Uh, not really going for a fine finish. Let's just take a scratch cut. Alright, we 
775. Oops, excuse me, I bumped it. 775. So I gotta cut 25 foul off of here. Let's go ahead and knock 20 off and uh, come back and do a finish pass. Let's check that on the part. Get the tail stock out of the way. That'll work good. That's perfect. Let's get the drill set up here and um, go ahead and drill these out. All right, we're, we're in the lathe. We've got a 19 30 seconds drill bit here. Um, we're running about, I don't know, four, somewhere between five, 600 RPM. The uh, tachometer loses a little resolution when it gets real slow. And uh, I measured the length of the flute. So we're just gonna measure the end of the flute and that'll give us enough drilled bushing. We can be sure that when we make our cut, um, that we have enough on hand, we have enough bushing to uh, work for us. Point three. That's exactly where I wanted to be. So now we're going to go ahead and part off. All right. So I went and set my um, set my caliper here to my dimension. What I'm going to do is I'm going to part off at three point two five. I went and check my drawing. I only need three point one inches to um, to actually clear. To make a complete bushing, I'm gonna throw it in back gear. First back gear range. Speed it up just a touch. That looks good.
YouTube. We've got both of our bushings made here and um, they're going to go in the block like so. I've cleaned the idea of the block and <clears throat> I've cleaned the exterior of these bushings with acetone, let them dry thoroughly on an oil free surface. A little in there. And when you don't have threads, when you just, this is really just more of a retaining compound, you don't have threads to work with, apply liberally. Insert with a twisting motion. To distribute, Oop. insert in the right direction. There we go. Clean up the excess and let it set up. Um, we're going to be cutting. We're gonna let this set up and we're gonna put this in the bandsaw and we're gonna be cutting it like so. So I'm gonna let it set up real nice. I don't want the bandsaw twisting these things around or pulling on them when it when it hits that steel material inside that aluminum block. So we're gonna let those set up for a nice long time. It won't take long, I mean 10-15 minutes and they're gonna be solid. Before we get started, got some new um, shop swag, some reader mail, or some viewer mail. And um, first thing first, we're gonna add a couple new stickers to the drawer here. Um, John Saunders from NYC CNC and Saunders Machine Work was nice enough to send me some stickers. So we're gonna go ahead and Add those to the collection. The cat has untied my apron. NYC CNC. Pardon me for the delay. And Thunder Machine Works. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Um, glad to add your collection. I'm getting some new stickers done right now. I am flat out. I'm getting some new stickers done here shortly, and um, I will be sure to send some your way. Um, let's move on. Um, while I was out at the Bar Z Bash, um, I got to spend some time with Chuck Bomarito, otherwise known as Outside Screwball. Um, funny guy, great guy, real friendly guy. Um, just a fabulous guy to hang out with. Uh, I'm sure, given the ability to hang out more time, we just have a great time. He's just, he's, he's just a friendly, friendly fellow. Just exactly like he is in his videos. And um, I had a little gift for Chuck. And, um, you know, Chuck was making the, um, the screwy balls. Neat idea, fabulous idea. And um, where you take a, he has a ball bearing with a flat on it. And um, you place the flat against your vice jaw and you use the point as a single point to hold a um, irregularly shaped work piece or for squaring stock that's not perfectly straight or perpendicular. Um, I will provide a link um, to Chuck's channel and video on the screwy balls. And um, it, it's a very, very nice addition to your tooling set. One of the things I mentioned to Chuck was that the largest one he made was an inch and a half. And that um, for those of us, like me, that have an eight inch Kurt vice, uh, the Kurt uh, 
the eight inch cur jaws are a little over two inches tall. So um, to reach middle of a workpiece, um, you'd really have to kind of move this thing around. So I gave Chuck some two inch, uh, and, and by the way, let's comment on the packing job here. I gave Chuck some two inch ball bearings and he has ground one and sent it back to me. Now, look at the way this came packed, check this out. So this was all wrapped up in the paper and in, in the plastic. And then inside here, packed between two layers of foam, and this was wrapped up, this tennis ball was all wrapped up in plastic. And then inside the cut tennis ball, it's a booger to get out. Chuck, you're packing genius. Maybe this is just a puzzle. So inside the tennis ball, also wrapped in plastic, is what I think is the first two-inch screwball. Check that out. So just to compare that with so to compare the two inch the inch and a half it is significantly larger as you can see but the two inch will get you pretty much to the middle of the jaw that point to the middle of the jaw on an eight inch curve last we left off um, We have um, Loctited in the inserts into uh, the jig and uh, They're in there. Let me tell you I'd hate to have to get them out now I mean nothing you get with a torch, but so they're in place. I have gone ahead and Scribed our first Line that we're gonna cut our first cut. I refer to this as the bottom cut. This is the bottom of the jig I refer to this as the bottom cut there it will be cutting away this section here there's a drawing that i will be i'll be posting a link below to my dropbox with all the drawings for this piece and if you look at the bottom cut drawing it gives you just the details on this so i have a drawing that basically highlights each cut that we're going to make we're going to make three cuts and uh, a lot of people asked kilroy why didn't you just set this up at the angle and drill the holes at the angle um and i said you know trust me this is easier and you're getting ready to see why so uh let's go over to the bandsaw let's uh get this set up in the bandsaw and let's make this cut so you can really see um uh, this thing come to life all right we're getting ready to make a cut and you're probably thinking to yourself well how are you going to make that 18 degree cut or 60 or whatever cut you're going to make on your bandsaw you have to some funky setup wrong I have an Ellis bandsaw. It miters. So I just, if you look way back there in the back, you'll see that there's a big miter gauge in the back. I rolled it over to 18 degrees, lined it up by eye basically, because that's good enough. And uh, you're gonna let it fly. Now, we have two different kinds of material in here. We've got aluminum, which normally calls for a very fast feed rate, a very fast band speed, and we have a uh, fairly robust steel, nothing hard, but we have 1144, which would call for a slower speed. Well, when you're in mixed mode like that, guess what? You use the slower speed for the material and just set your feed accordingly. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. Let me go ahead and feed down. I think I need to move my workpiece just a little bit. I do. That lined up. Having a mitering bandsaw is great, but it's harder than you think to line it up. Now here's the trick. You're trying to line your bandsaw up. You can't get your head in here to look straight down the blade. So I take my cell phone Turn on the camera function and look like so. I got to come back a little.
Right. Check that out. That looks pretty good. So, my camera away. Cut this nice and slow because we've got mixed mode, making sure my cut's tracking down my line, my scribe line. Looks like we're going pretty darn good. I can correct this. I'm leaving a little bit of material so I can correct this later on the mill to get it just right. Got my stick glue here. Um, Ellis actually doesn't recommend that you use coolant on their uh, on their band saws. They suggest that you get everything dry, um, which is one of the reasons I don't have coolant set up on this mill. But I'll get back to you in a little bit. Don't want you. It's going to be kind of boring. We're tracking along nicely. We ought to be getting ready to just encounter one of those steel inserts in just a little bit. So I'm standing by to make sure it's going nice and slow so that it doesn't jump or anything when it hits that insert. All right, we're into a full width cut now. Like I said, taking my time, going slow. And uh, we ought to be catching up to that um, Steel insert any second. Okay, we're definitely into the steel insert now. You can't hear, probably can't hear it on camera, but you can hear the dip, uh, the varying sound. The cut sounds different, and you can hear the chips being pulled. You can hear you can hear the blade running over that metal the steel. It's a very subtle change. Um, if you're wondering, I got an aluminum spoil board here to, uh, it's, it's designed to be cut, so uh, it will cut into the table a little bit, but that's perfectly normal. When it gets nasty, you just flip it over and bolt it back down and use the other side. We're through the cut, as you see. Uh, the piece is falling back, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it off. Pull my work piece out. There's my leftover. Let's head over to the bench and check it out, plan our next cut. Okay, guys, we're back from the bandsaw here after our first cut, what I referred to as the bottom cut. A lot of people ask me, Jay, why didn't you just set the block up at the angle you wanted and drill at an angle and all that? And you know, wouldn't that have been easier? No. And this is why. Look at that fit. Right? Could you imagine trying to cut and mill to that fit right there. It's like glass, right? That would be a real tricky booker, but doing it this way makes you look like the man. I mean, order of operation is everything, right? So anyway, where do we go from here? Uh, the next cut we're gonna make is we're just gonna square up this end. Now what we have to do is we have to square off this end, so there's not much to this, All right? We want that square so it can butt up against the work. And I've got a little slight design change we're going to make now that I'm I, I think more about my implementation here, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit longer, a little bit later. So we're going to bring this back to the bandsaw. We're going to straighten it up. We're going to make this cut. 
And then once we have this cut, the next cut we're going to make is just going to be parallel. Here, parallel to this edge. And we'll use this, this uh, face to rest against, and it'll be a straight cut. So we'll have the, the basics of our um, pocket drill done. Thank you.